One of my favorite tools is still the Puppet tool that was introduced a couple of versions of After Effects ago. And it lives right here. You'll see this little icon of a pin. What it allows you to do is to animate things that would be difficult to do normally. So what I'd like you guys to do is open the same file I'm about to open to. You'll find it inside of your work files folder, but mine is on my desktop, so I'll show you what it's called. It's called Hannibal.png. And what this file is, is a 3D render of my company mascot, who is Hannibal the Mastodon. So I'll go ahead and open that. And once you have Hannibal open, simply click and drag it right here on this icon to make a comp. And as you can see, Hannibal's kind of tough. He's ready to fight. And he's got a cool earring. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate the pins by clicking on the pin icon right here one time. Once you have the icon, your cursor itself turns into a gigantic pin. Now the way it works, and let me go ahead and just magnify this as much as I can by minimizing the rest of the interface. The way it works is, it works like your own body. So the best way to describe it is, let's start with your shoulder. All right, let's, let's choose the left shoulder. Imagine I took this tool and I put a pin in your left shoulder. I also put a pin in your elbow, a pin in your wrist, and a pin at the uh, tip of your longest finger. Each pin gives me control over the rest of those parts, and they allow me to manipulate them while not manipulating everything else. Let me give you an example. Follow along with me and click one time on his trunk, all right? And with this pin here, we can click on it. And when you move the pin, the whole character moves. That's because we have a control point, but the rest of the character doesn't have anything to lock it down from being moved. Now do the same thing and click on the middle part of his trunk like so. And click once again on this first pin. Notice that it rotates now. Okay, and the, the trunk actually can be manipulated. I'll undo that by pressing Command or Control Z. Now we'll add some more pins. We'll put one right here, we'll put one right about here, here, and here, and also at the tip of each foot, and right on the tusks. We should have enough pins now to be able to move one pin and the rest of them stay still. Now this is not an exact science, so don't think that you're always going to put the pins in the same spot. It depends on several things, whether the character is three quarters you like this, whether the character is facing us completely straight on, whether it's at an angle, and so on. So let's go ahead once again, and with the same tool selected, click on the first pin, and notice that we can move his trunk now, and we have some deformation on this part, and a little bit here as well. But the rest of the body stays still. So how in the world does this work? If you come up here, you see you have an icon here, this is Mesh. Click one time, and you'll see that the artwork has been created and turned into quads or little triangles here. These triangles are actually polygons like you'd find in a 3D application. And this mesh tells these pins what parts they control. So I can go ahead and click here and the parts of the mesh that move are the ones between this pin and this pin. But this pin has no influence over the rest of the body. Likewise, I can grab this foot and see I can control the back foot and the ones nearest to it. All right, so if you really want to lock the character down and have total rigid motion on certain parts, add more pins like so. And I can click on this foot and we get less motion here. If I add one here, we get even less. So you can really, really lock down how you're going to animate your character based on how many pins you place. And as you notice, the forehead's moving a lot. So I can lock the forehead down a little bit and now it doesn't move as much. You can also get rid of pins by clicking on a pin and hitting delete on your keyboard. I click on this one, delete, this one, delete, and that influence is then given to the pin closest to the point that you just got rid of. So now I can go ahead and move this hump and a lot more of the body moves. So that is the basis of the pins. Let's go ahead and talk about more of how this tool works.